Oh, well bowled. That's out, yes. Look pretty plum too. David Evans, no hesitation at all. And a very quick, lively delivery getting through Peter Dunne's defence there. So the first wicket goes down with ten on the board and we're just in the third over. Yes, Peter Denning uh, not getting far enough forward to that delivery and it's encouraging to see Graham Dilley bowling so well. And certainly some uh, early morning movement for both Kent openers here. Ellison swinging the ball and uh, Dilly moving that nicely off the side. Four slips in now for Phil Slocum. That's a nicely controlled shot to see uh, Slocum off the mark. There's two runs in this. And he's bowled in there, he plays. Oh, Billy strikes again. Robert loses his middle stump. And Somerset to 20 for two. This is a very fine piece of fast bowling this morning from Graham Dilley. There we see that action wide of the crease going into Roebuck and straight through the gate. And one of the best sights a fast bowler can ever see. A middle stump uh, almost removed from the ground. Shot, old pitch ball on Mike Stump, and put away in very professional style there by uh, Phil Slocum. Just having the screen moved. on Travis giving chase we turn in for the third here without any bother uh, fifth keeping running a bit of exercise looks a bit stiff this morning skill of Vivian Richards Jarvis has got that strong breeze coming in from oh now it's just about over his left shoulder as he's coming in and he's moving the ball down the slope no easy runs out there at the moment safely away frustrating for Jarvis Four more runs to Slocum. Oh, great stroke. What a super shot that was. Superb timing. Just a little push and a flick of the wrist and that went so fast up the hill. Richard has dominated the strike in this partnership. All these good players seem to have the ability to do that. Well, I'd mark that down as quite a deliberate stroke. to do that, Tavare is round about fourth slip now. Absolute beauty. Once again Viv Richards looking to play that on the onside, holding up and beating him outside the offside. What a good Go. 
well caught Graham Johnson away to his right there's the breakthrough it's not Richards but Slocum who's gone caught Johnson old Baptiste for 20 and it's 89 for three Bill Slocum chasing this wide one not quite a half volley and a very good catch it slipped there that went very fast <laughs> 50 for Big Richards Faced only 54 balls. Ah, he's gone. And Dilly brought back from the pavilion end has done the job. Alan not moved smartly away to his right. It was a good catch as well, but a very good piece of bowling. Richard's gone for 51. It's 95 for four. And Kent right back in the game. That's through this time. It's a good shot by uh, Popperwella. Very confident way to get off the mark. And uh, the three figures comes up for Somerset. So the scoring rate, despite losing four wickets, has been quite brisk. They've been knocking along at about uh, four runs and over in a match now reduced to 50 overs per side. more like the Dotham of old, being waiting for the over pitch one and makes no mistake beautifully timed and placed to perfection square on the offside it's edged away found the gap between keeper and slip four streaky runs there for Nigel Popperwell the luck there could really have gone anywhere Both them to face Cowdery for the first time. Short, hooked away, high in the air. It's going to be out. Yes, very safely fouled at deep square leg. Graham Johnson, one of the safest pairs of hands in first class cricket, makes no mistake. And that's a great blow struck by Cowdery. Both of them goes for nine. Caught by Johnson off the bowling of Cowdery. And 112 for five now is the Somerset score. Ian Botham unable to resist a challenge at any time and Chris Cowdery's uh, loaded the gun and Ian's uh, fired his own bullets here I think that's a pretty thick edge goes pretty high and Graham Johnson judges the catch superbly Flicked away quite skillfully by Jeremy Lloyd. His first four, nicely timed, picked up from uh, about his ankles. So he moves on to six, and it's 126 for five. Valuable runs there, only late buys, nothing to pop all its own total. Well, to get across there, but Alan not uh, doesn't miss too many of those. Yes, that's absolutely right, Richie. Little outside edge, away swinger, and I think nine times out of ten you'd have backed Notty to catch that one. It's very close. It's even closer than that. David Constant uh, had no hesitation down there. Java strikes. This one came down the hill. Oh my goodness, I reckon that would have knocked the middle out. Well, they've decided they have to try and take to Chris Cowdery. He's bowled very well out there. Chris Tavley has done himself some sort of an injury. It looks like a knee. 
this is one of the peculiarities about the Lord's Ground, that little upslope just in front of the pavilion. Now, I think he whacked his knee against the wall, in fact. Oh, he seems to be moving a little bit better now. Should be out. Is out. Absolutely dead straight out of the man at mid off. Potterwell has gone for 35, and that's another blow for Somerset. Yes, and Nigel Potterwell making a bit of room for himself and flat batting this, and he's a little bit unlucky, I think. Hit it straight to Chris Cowdery. It really could have gone anywhere. swing of the bat <laughs> that is a tremendous strike picked it up good length ball nothing wrong with the delivery and he picked that up from off the off stump and it went high into the grandstand oh, well, good Yorker and he'll need to be quick he's out and the Garner knew it he just kept running so a wicket falling after that six was hit. Very quick reaction this on Chris Cowdery's part. He's off like a shot as soon as he sees Mark start. And it's really no contest if he hits the wicket. And there he is. My goodness, Joel made a great effort to get in. safely caught Mark Benson at deep square Marks is out for 29 Dredge remains 3 not out total is 193 Cowdery picks up his second wicket and it's 194 to win for Kent they've got to make them at 3.88 runs per over Final Somerset card, a stand of 69 for the third wicket between Slocum and Viv Richards. And of course, when Viv Richards got out in the last over before lunch, heaven knows what he said when he got back to the dressing room. And then Ian Botham soon afterwards, it precluded the possibility, perhaps the probability, of a score around about the 250 mark. But their bowlers still must have felt they had something to bowl at. The star of the Kent bowling, undoubtedly Graham Dilley with four for 29. Maybe a timely effort with the England uh, touring side being...